stand, grab our songbooks. Boy, what a night this is going to be. Looking forward to what the Lord has in store. It's going to be exciting and a lot, of, a lot of things in store tonight. Let's stand. Page number 50. There's power in the blood. Page number 50. Let's stand. Sing it out on the first verse. It represents souls going to be saved. Right. And boy, there's nothing greater than what's about to happen. And, uh, and, and I'll say it tonight, for His glory, for the Lord's glory. That's what it's all about. And uh, doing what we can for the Lord. Amen. Our men have come forward for our evening offering. You be faithful to the Lord in your giving. And uh, then as soon as we have our offering, I'll make a couple announcements. We'll go a different type of service tonight. You already know that. You can already see that. A different type of service. And uh, so we're going to go right into uh, some announcements tonight. And then uh, we are going to have a couple things to bring to the church to vote on tonight. Exciting things. And really what we're doing is we're setting in order the church for God to use this thing in a great way. And, you know, if God's going to use something, it needs to be set in order. And uh, I believe God blesses that, and so that's our goal tonight. Let's have a word of prayer for our offering tonight. Brother Heathner, if you will, lead us in prayer. Amen.
Amen. Well, an exciting time. Praise the Lord. We are excited about what the Lord's going to do over the next eight weeks. And uh, I know I don't have to really say this, but many things going on over the next couple weeks. Am I too loud tonight? A little bit too loud? All right. Uh, we have to change some things up a little bit tonight. And so bear with us, if you will. Uh, let me make some announcements as we get started tonight. Uh, don't forget about, of course, next Saturday, next Sunday, the weekend, beginning our, really our spring program uh, in earnest, starting on Saturday with 60 for 60. What is that? Well, we're asking uh, for 60 soul winners for 60 minutes. Now, uh, we're not door knocking this, this coming Saturday, as we do every Saturday. We're simply putting flyers in the door. Our goal is to have 2,500 flyers put on doors on Saturday. Now, it's a goal, and it is going to happen. We need your help. I want to tell you, we need your help. If you're not there, then me and the boys will be out there pretty late uh, putting flyers on doors. We need your help. It'll be an exciting time on Saturday at 10 o'clock. Give us 60 minutes, if you will, and uh, if you'd like to go on the bus with us, we're going to saturate the area of Galleon and uh, we're going to hit as many houses as we can in Galleon, just putting a flyer on the door. Uh, maybe you're able to just come over and pray. We would encourage you to do that. Uh, maybe you can come over and, and maybe even drive a vehicle or something like that, or maybe you can go on the bus with us. Whatever you can do, be here Saturday at 10 o'clock, and then, of course, hopefully you're inviting folks for Resurrection Sunday, for Easter Sunday. Uh, next Sunday, of course, the world knows it as Easter. We know it as Resurrection Sunday. And, uh, but we are looking to have a, just a banner day coming up next Sunday. And uh, there's been a lot of preparation, still a lot to do for that. And I want to encourage you to invite somebody with you for this special day. People are looking for somewhere to go coming up on Resurrection Sunday. So how many have already invited somebody for, all right, praise the Lord for that. And invite somebody, and then, of course, next Sunday night, uh, most importantly, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper. That'll be a special time, and, uh, and, and what a great way to kick off the spring program. Resurrection Sunday, the Lord's Supper that night, remembering the cross, and really bringing us back to what it's all about. And uh, so important, next Sunday, be a part of that. And then every offering in the month of April will go towards our college students and uh, we have several college students, and we want to be a blessing to them. And so if you throw in a $20 bill on Wednesday, a uh, $50 bill, $100 bill on Wednesdays during the month of April, that will go towards our college students, and we want to be a blessing to them. And then also, of course, I'll mention tonight with the spring program. Now, how many of you know what team you are on? How many? All right, praise the Lord. And that's good. I see the flags waving. How many of you have no idea? Uh, what, what, what team you're on. Anybody? I don't have any idea what team I'm on. All right. And uh, uh, so I think everybody knows exactly what team you're on. And, uh, and, and let me say, there's eight weeks of our spring program starting next Sunday. Now, tonight's all about getting ready for that. We have Resurrection Sunday next Sunday. April 7th is King James Bible Sunday. Brother Bill Grady will be here. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, we have the man when it comes to the King James Bible, the history of the King James Bible. We want to ground our church in that, and I believe we have really one of the best on the issue coming in April 7th. You won't want to miss that. April 14th will be Friend Day, and uh, you want to invite your friends. We'll have the chili cook-off that night, a great night to invite people. It'll be a lot of fun. April 21st, Baby Day. I already invited a couple people today that just had babies for April 21st. Not too early to do that. And if you know somebody with a baby, we'll honor them that day. April 28th, boy, it's going to be a great day. We're going to have quartet singing all day long. Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. We'll probably sing, I'm guessing, 30, 40 songs that day. It's going to be a great day. And then after church that night will be a soup bean fellowship with cornbread. Come on. And that's going to be a great day. May 5th, boy, all the way into May now, we're going to have old-fashioned Sunday. 
Get ready for Old Fashioned Sunday. If you know what you're going to wear, prepare for that. We want everybody dressed Old Fashioned that day. We're going to have a carnival out here for the kids. Boy, we're going to have a bunch of animals out here. And uh, Brother Richie's going to bring in a bunch of different things. And we have some other people doing some special things that day for Carnival Sunday for the kids, May 5th. And then May 12th, Mother's Day. And then we'll finish it all off on May 19th for Family Day. Brother Craig Bryan will be with us. The Brown family will be singing all day long, and that'll just be an exciting thing. Several things going on that day, along with kindergarten graduation. A lot to do that night. So eight weeks coming up here, eight weeks. Uh, just going to be a fun time, a time of fellowship, but really a time to serve the Lord and get serious about serving the Lord and seeing souls saved. And that's the goal. We want to see more souls saved than ever before. Well, this year we have decided we have four teams. We have uh, the United States Air Force, and then we have the United States Navy. Wonderful. All right, not as loud. I need some louder people on my team. I don't have, now they're very refined. That's good. I need some louder people. Brother Cody, you got to let it go out there. All right, come on now. And, uh, and then we have the United States Marine Corps. All right, praise the Lord. All right, and then the United States Army. All right, so hopefully you know what team you are on. And boy, we're going to have just a great time coming up with this program. And uh, before we get started, I told every captain you have 10 minutes to introduce. So let me just tell you how it's going to go tonight. Different kind of service. Uh, but tonight we're going to talk a little bit about adding one thing to our Constitution and then we're going to vote on that. We're going to vote on deacons, trustees tonight, as well as vote on picking up a bus tomorrow. And so let me go over those things, and then we're going to turn it over right away to Brother Jarrett and the Marine Corps. And uh, we'll have the Marine Corps and their introduction, and then, we'll have, and then we'll have the United States Navy and their introduction, and then the Air Force will go number three, and then lastly, usually last, is the Army. Uh, Right, and they know it. Amen. All right. And then at the end, I'm going to preach for just about 10 minutes, all right? Just about. I knew that would get you. Amen. Let me talk real quick. Uh, real quick, church, we're going to vote on a couple things. And, uh, you know, it's important that the church does not make mistakes. You say, well, everybody makes mistakes, but we're not... Uh, we're not a person, we're a body of believers, and uh, really the church should not make mistakes when it comes to what we do, and everything ought to be calculated, everything ought to be in order, and really that's what we're doing, we're setting things in order. How many of you know the day that we live in today is a wicked, evil, dark day more than ever before, so important at the church that we have things in order as we grow, as we see visitors, people coming into our church. And there were three things that we proposed two months ago to our Constitution to add to our Constitution. Uh, the first one really has to do with the shutdown that took place during COVID. And uh, we want to make sure that in our Constitution we have something written that no government body can shut down the church. How important that is that we... We will not abide by uh, uh, regulations put on. And that's the idea of separation of church and state. That we as independent fundamental Baptists have a right to assemble together. And, uh, and thank God for our Constitution, our United States Constitution. But, but we, want, we, we need to have this in our Constitution. Let me read it to you as I read it two months ago. And, uh, and so it's already been put before you, but let me read it to you, and this will be added to our Constitution, and we will vote on that. We as a church strongly believe in the biblical command to worship God together in person. The word church means a gathering of citizens called out from their homes into some public place, an assembly. If there is no gathering, there is no church. We are blessed to be able to share our church services via live stream, with our elderly, our shut-ins, and missionaries around the world. However, we do not believe that a live stream or recording of a church service is a biblical replacement for the command to assemble together. 
Furthermore, we do, rec- we, do not, we do not recognize, nor will we comply with, any outside edict, laws, mandate, restriction, or regulation by an ecclesiastical body or government entity interfering with our biblical and First Amendment constitutional right to assemble and worship. As a congregation is forced to choose between the mandates of God or the mandates of men, we will choose to obey God. And so what this is, this is an addition to our already intact constitution that says no matter what happens in the future, no matter if there is a COVID 2.0, no matter what, that no one has the right to close down Grace Baptist Church. And so we want to go ahead and vote on that tonight. All in favor of receiving that into our constitution, raise your hand. And any opposed... Same sign. All right, a hundred percent vote adding to that. Also, the use of our constitu or the use of our church facilities. Church, how important it is it that we have in order even before someone comes in and desires to use our properties, our buildings, our facilities for their own purposes. How important it is that we have these guidelines already set in place of who can and cannot use the properties of Grace Baptist Church and these buildings and facilities. Use of the church facilities. The church facilities were provided through God's benevolence and by the sacrificial generosity of church members. The the, uh, facility use will not be permitted to persons or groups holding, advancing, or advocating beliefs or practices that conflict with the church's faith or moral teachings. Therefore, in no event shall persons or groups who hold, advance, or advocate beliefs or engage in practices that contradict the church's faith use any church facility, nor may church facilities be used in any way that contradicts the church's faith. This policy applies to all facilities, regardless of whether the facilities are connected to the church's sanctuary, and the church sees all its properties as holy and set apart to God. The pastor or official designee must approve all uses of church facilities. Anything that happens at Grace Baptist Church, we want it to bring honor and glory to God. We don't want to be under uh, the, the, the realm of someone coming in saying we want you to perform a a homosexual marriage in your church. No, that's against our church policy and it's against the word of God. And so, but those things have to be set in order uh, before that ever happens. And so that's what we're doing tonight. We'll go ahead and vote on the use of church facilities only to be used according to, uh, to worship the Lord. Do we have any questions about that? Yes, sir, Brother Lee. Exactly. Yes, sir. And and that is included a little bit in that. And it says uh, uh, the policy applies to all facilities, regardless of whether the facilities are connected to the church's sanctuary. So if it's owned by Grace Baptist Church, including the school, those things are to be used uh, there for the Lord. And uh, let's go ahead. Any other questions on that at all? All right. We'll go. Yes, sir. Brother Larry. Correct, yes. Any advertising that will be put on, and that's, that's a valid point. Eventually we will have our radio station, 104.9. That's, that's not just a possibility. That's a reality soon coming. And so anything that will be put on there will be, of course, approved by the church and setting those things in order and to glorify God for sure. Absolutely, yes, sir. Any other questions at all about that? All right, we'll go ahead and put that to a vote. The use of all church facilities to be used for the glory of God. And let's go ahead and vote on that. All in a favor, go ahead and raise your right hand. Amen. And any opposed, same sign. All right, 100% vote on that to go ahead and add that. And then lastly is marriage, gender, and sexuality. We believe that God wonderfully and immutably creates each person as a male or female. These two distinct complementary genders together reflect the image and nature of God. Rejection of one's biological gender is rejection of the image of God within that person. We believe that the term marriage has only one meaning, and that is marriage sanctioned by God. Marriage joins one man and one woman 
in a single exclusive union as described in Scripture. We believe that God intends sexual intimacy to occur only between a man and a woman who are married to each other. We believe that God has commanded that no intimate sexual activity be engaged in outside of a marriage between a man and a woman. We believe that any form of sexual immorality, including adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, bisexual conduct, bestiality, incest, pornography, and attempting to change one's biological sex or otherwise acting upon any disagreement with one's biological sex is sinful and offensive to God. We believe that in order to preserve the function and integrity of the church as a local body of Christ, all persons that are employed by the church in any capacity or who serve as volunteers shall abide by and agree to this statement on marriage, gender, and sexuality and conduct themselves accordingly. They must provide a biblical model to the church members in the community. I'll open that up to questions at this time. And we never thought 30 and 40 years ago we would have to be talking about this issue. But how important it is that if somebody would in the future come in and say, I would like to work for or I would like to serve in some capacity at Grace Baptist Church, we have to have something in order and uh, in line today uh, to be able to offset the world's ideas and the world's agenda. And uh, so how important it is. Any questions at all on this subject? We'll go ahead and vote on adding this to our Constitution at this time. All in favor, raise your right hand. And any opposed, same sign. 100% vote on that as well. At this time, how important it is that every church, according to Acts chapter number 6, sets in order a biblical foundation in a church. Uh, every church needs a foundation. Every church needs a guideline, a, 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 guideline, a, a spiritual emphasis, and really <clears throat> something that is a backbone of every church, and that is the church staff. Uh, Acts chapter number 6, the Bible sets in order uh, deacons in the church. In those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, let, us, uh, let ye, uh, brethren, look ye out among you seven men, and then notice these requirements, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer, and to the ministry of the Word. The Bible says there that they chose out for the work of the ministry so that it would allow a pastor, uh, an elder to be able to labor in the Word, a group of men filled with the Holy Spirit of God to serve the church and to serve the needs of the church. We have in order right now Brother Lee Comstock already as a deacon and has agreed to abide by uh, the requirements of being a deacon and to continue in that role over the next two years. At this point, we want to put two men before you to vote on tonight. And uh, the number, number one is Brother Randy Mullins. And I talked to Brother Randy Mullins several weeks ago, a man I believe that is full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. And uh, I would look to for counsel, a man of God, I believe. And uh, so I want to present Brother Randy Mullins before you as a deacon. Any questions at all about Brother Randy? All right, let's go ahead and vote tonight to bring on Brother Randy Mullins as a deacon for the next two years. All in favor, raise your right hand. And any opposed, same sign, 100% vote. Praise the Lord. Number two is Brother Lee Slater. And I appreciate Brother Lee Slater and his heart for the Lord and just a wonderful addition to our church and appreciate his heart for ministry, his willingness to serve in any capacity and I sure do appreciate that. I bring Brother Lee Slater before you as a deacon for the next two years and like to vote on him at this time. All in favor of receiving Brother Lee into deaconship, go ahead and raise your right hand. Any opposed, 
same sign. All right, 100% vote. And so we will have Brother Lee Comstock, Brother Lee Slater, and Brother Randy Mullins as our deacons. Over the last several years, we have had several trustees uh, there and have served honorably, done a wonderful job as trustees. Brother Larry Hefner has been a blessing to our church, working in the sound room, uh, working on the security uh, team there, and just as an usher, you see him every week. Uh, about Brother Larry Hefner, he's been faithful through all these years, and we sure do appreciate him. He wants to continue doing some things, but would like to become a trustee emeritus and uh, cannot do everything he used to do, he said. But a pastor, he said, I will like to remain faithful and help out as much. So we want to include Brother Larry as a trustee emeritus. Also, Brother Bill Emsweiler. Boy, I, it, it's hard for me to ever see uh, an offering that's taken without seeing Brother Bill Emsweiler in front of us. I miss him with all my heart, one of my good friends, and uh, he's in a nursing home now, and I believe the Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. Brother Bill Emsweiler is faithful, faithful, faithful all these years to the Lord, always saying to me, Pastor, I wish I could do more. I wish I could do more, and we sure do miss him around here, but we want to put him also in that group as a trustee emeritus included in that and honor him. I believe how that would, how, how the Lord would want to honor him, but add to these great men, uh, two men, I believe, that are willing to help out at the church here and really step up and be such a blessing to the church. Number one is Brother Larry Fulton, and I appreciate Brother Larry Fulton, everything that he's already done and the blessing that he has been to our church. And Brother Larry said he would be willing to step in as trustee uh, there and help out things around the church. All in favor of receiving Brother Larry Fulton into as a trustee, raise your right hand. And any opposed, same sign, 100% vote, praise the Lord. Secondly is Brother Vince Dean, and I appreciate Brother Vince so much. Uh, I don't think there's anybody uh, like Brother Vince. Kind, 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 and has a heart for the Lord. If there's anything, I have to be careful what I say to Brother Vince or he will do it. And I appreciate so much his heart for the Lord, him and Miss Lori, a wonderful family and such a blessing to us already. But Brother Vince said he would be willing also to be a trustee here at Grace Baptist Church. All in favor of receiving Brother Vince Dean as a trustee, raise your right hand. And any opposed, same sign. 100% vote. Wonderful. So we will have this great group of men, including Brother Jarrett, along as our youth pastor. And really, uh, church, let me just say, uh, uh, if anything were to ever happen to me, there needs to be men of God in place uh, that are willing and able uh, that, that nothing would change at our church if I'm not standing here, that our church would continue to go forward for the Lord. I believe what we're doing here is setting those things in order, and I thank these men so much for their service, and what a wonderful thing it is to be a servant for the Lord. <clears throat> lastly tonight, before we give the floor to Brother Jarrett, uh, lastly tonight is our bus. We've been raising money for our bus over the last uh, month, two months, trying to raise $22,000 up to about seventeen or so uh, right now, and uh, just a little bit away. Uh, come to find out last week, I got a hold. I said, we're about ready to buy this bus. And they told us that it was already sold. And, uh, well, you know where the Lord closes one door, he opens another door. And I don't think anything is by accident with the Lord. We need to wait on him and everything. And the Lord led me to a man that sells buses and, and just a miracle how I was led to this person, ended up getting his phone number, called him, and he has a beautiful 18-passenger three wheelchair with a lift bus for $15,500. And uh, so I said, I believe that we will take it, hold it for me. I will talk to the church. But church, it will be a wonderful addition. It is ready to go, ready to pass inspection and to get on the road to pick up people in wheelchairs that can't be picked up. It's a, it's a beautiful vehicle. There are papers on the back table. Uh, we have a couple thousand that has come in already above that. And what I would like to do is use that towards our handicapped bathrooms. Uh, there we will be uh, 
Lord willing, having that done as well this year, that will be of great expense. And uh, so we'd like to vote on uh, spending $15,500 on the bus and using the other couple thousand that has come in and putting that towards our handicapped bathrooms. Any questions about that at all tonight? And uh, I, I believe that I made that pretty clear. And, and here's the goal. Yes, ma'am, right over here. Yes, ma'am, Miss Martin. The bus uh, is from out west. He goes and picks it up, but he's actually in Michigan. And uh, so he went all the way out west to bring it towards Ohio to pick it up for us, I believe. And that's how God worked. And so just a couple hours away. And Lord willing, if we vote on that tonight, I will pick it up tomorrow. Lord willing. Praise the Lord. Any other questions about that at all? All right. Well, let's go ahead and vote on that as well as voting on including that other 2000 into the handicapped bathrooms uh, later on this year. That will be done, and uh, we already have the plans drawn up for that. And the idea is bringing people to church, but they have to be able, we have to be able to have something uh, where someone can go into a restroom with a wheelchair and uh, be able to be comfortable in that area and uh, we just really have everything in order. And you can see we're setting the groundwork for so many things. And listen, you cannot build a house unless you have a solid foundation. And uh, what we're doing tonight, if you, you notice it, we're setting the foundation on so many things, and I believe God's going to do a great work. At this time, we'll go ahead and vote on buying that bus uh, there tomorrow for the purchase price. I believe it's $15,495. All in favor of purchasing the bus, raise your right hand. And any opposed, same sign. All right. And that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Because as a church, there's no mistakes. I don't make the decisions as a pastor. We make the decision as a church. And uh, that way you can never go wrong with that. Well, okay. Uh, now, uh, da -da -da -da, we're ready for our spring program. Boy, I'm excited about this. I hope you're excited as well. And so we will start out with Brother Jarrett and the U.S. Marine Corps. Here we go. Army or the Navy ever see heaven seen, they'll find the streets are guarded by the United States Marine. Uh, that the Marines were selected to go first. The Marines are the first branch of the military there. In fact, older than the United States itself. And anyone that knows that, night, or is uh, 1775 was when the United States Marines was formed. And I believe that was on purpose. Uh, we were chosen tonight to go first. Now, I want to tell you something about the Marines is that you have to know. They have a slogan. They have a slogan, improvise, adapt, 
overcome. And I want to tell you tonight, we had to do some adapting. Uh, yes. <laughs> brother, uh, brother Bob Raymond, decorated Marine. He had a, a nice uh, officer suit I could have worn tonight. And then my body wasn't able to adapt to get it to fit me. <laughs> Uh, so we overcame that, and here we are. I have a hat because his head was still small back then. Uh, but I want to tell you, we had a great time just getting things ready for tonight. I want to tell you, there is no mistake. The Marines, they're the first ones in, and they're the last ones to leave. We ought to be the ones to set an example, and I want to tell you tonight, uh, that is what I believe and we're here for today. Uh, as Marines, my team, listen, raise your hand if you're on the Marines. We didn't need all the little tiny flags. We had one that was bigger than all the other ones combined. And I want to tell you, each and every one of us here, we may not be the biggest in number, but the few, the proud. And I want to tell you, each and every single one of these Marines in here are going to be example setters. I want to show you a passage of scripture today from the Word of God. 2 Timothy in chapter 2, the Bible says, uh, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall also, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness, and as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And then, listen, it says faithful men. Hey, I want to tell you, semper fi, semper fidelis, it means always faithful. That's what the Marine Corps is about. It's about faithfulness. And listen, I know that there's going to be some jabs for the Marines tonight. I know people are going to be, oh, they're jarheads, they're dumb. I want to tell you this. We'll have all the time in the world for that. I, uh, I believe that uh, there's going to be a lot of poking, and that's okay. We'll get there. Uh, I want to tell you, there's a reason that Army is A-R-M-Y. They ain't ready for the Marines yet. I get it. Hey, hey. We'll get that stuff coming our way, too. It'll happen. But I want to tell you, more than anything, more than the banter, more than the jokes, uh, something that I love is that the precedent, the precedent that we're going to set as the Marines, listen, we're the faithful ones. We're the ones going out soul winning. We're the ones here for every service. We're the ones who are working in the ministry. The ones who are being used. The ones who are that, there to set an example. I want to tell you, there's a reason that we're the only branch of the military that doesn't need an act of Congress to go out and do something. That's what, I mean, hey, say what you want, but and the president needs to defend it. Uh, when someone, when the, when the embassies need defended, uh, when there's a, a place that needs to be, uh, needs some forces to go in, the Marines are there. Listen, that's not true of the other, other branches of the military. Now, I, I don't want to get into too much of the weeds here, but listen, the Air Force, I, I, I'm sorry, I meant the Chair Force, <laughs> the, the Chair Force, listen, hey, good people, smart, but listen, I don't need any keyboard warriors in this fight, okay? I want to have I want to have the men out there. I want to have the I want to have the grunts out there. I want to have the door kickers out there. Hey, we're going to be the door knockers for the spring program. We're going to be the ones out there who are willing to put in the work. I would say that's one thing we are not afraid of is to put in the work. It, I see uh, amongst all of the people in this room, and I mean no disrespect for uh, to any of the other branches of the military. Everyone who ever served, you know, has my utmost respect. But listen, we're not going to be the Navy. We're not just not going to do it. We're not going to be the Navy. We're going to be the Marines. Listen, the, the Navy's our taxi. They take us where we need to go, all right? That's what they do. So, you know, we'll give them a tip. And the tip is, follow after us. Go like the Marines. Go be the ones knocking on the doors. Be the ones going out, soul winning. And listen, we're going to set an example. And I believe that in this passage of scriptures we just read, if you read down to verse chapter 4, it says, No man that warreth entangleth himself, entangling, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Listen, a, a, amongst all the things that we're doing today, of course, you know, I want to beat you, you want to beat me. It's a futile battle, I'm going to win. But no, but the thing is, we're all striving to, stri we're striving to please the same master, the one who chose us to be a good soldier. And listen, tonight, I want to tell you, no matter what, no matter who wins, no matter who gets to eat a pie, by the way, they say, I say eat a pie because if a pie comes to my face, I'm going wide mouth opened. I am letting that thing come, and I'm just going to take it. But listen, it, 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 no matter who wins, no matter who's the one uh, getting the pie in the face, I pray that the Lord would use my group. I pray that the Lord would use the Marines to see people saved. I want to see folks saved. I believe we have the power to do it. And I think as a, as a force all together, of course, with all the jokes aside, the, com the competitiveness that these men are going to bring and even presenting their, their team against mine, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of that. I hope that we can take that same competitiveness. 
I hope that we can take that same fervor and that same, that same love for what we're doing and take it out to the world and show a lost and dying world how to get to heaven. And I want to be, I want to be leading the charge. That's what I want to do as a Marine here. I want to say the Marines, you know, we, we got it down. We even have some, uh, some extra stuff that's pretty cool here. I don't know if you can hear that, but we're really put together around here. I got the Marines hymn in my hat. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I also wanted to say this. As I look across all these, these flags, you can tell that the Marines did not put up this, this rope thing. The idea was to where as some team starts to win, you can move the flags. Then some, some guy put zip ties over there so you can't move them. But that's okay. It's all right. Hey, we'll forgive them and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll work alongside them if we have to. But that's, uh, that's my spiel. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. And thank God for the Marine Corps. And at this time, at this time, we will introduce the United States Navy. These sailors. I am Captain Chris Spencer of the USS KJV. You are Petty Officer Luke Spencer. All right, Captain. Petty Officer Jeremiah Spencer. All right, Captain. And shipmate Alyssa Spencer. Yes, sir, Daddy. It's common knowledge that in the Navy, everyone learns in the Naval Academy, there is a motto. And this motto that has been freshly learned is... Don't do drugs. No, not don't do drugs. <laughs> don't give up the ship. Don't give up the ship. It has come to my knowledge, sailors, that certain sailors have become sloppy, lazy, and undisciplined. Today, there is a great task in front of us, continuing over the next eight weeks. So, to prepare for this spring program, we must be prepared and ready when called. The Navy is about honor, courage, and commitment. Today, we must work on three things to get better. Navy Squadron, we must work on our battle cry. For the Army, it's Hua. For the Marines, it's Ura. For the Coast Guard, it's Huza. And for the Air Force, it's Oh No. <laughs> but for the Navy, it is Huza. Huza for the Navy. Let's practice that one at a time. And let's hear a big hoozah. Hoorah. No. No, no, not hoorah. I said hoozah. Petty Officer Luke Spencer. Hoozah. Not hoozah. Hoo-yah. Let's hear it again. Petty Officer Luke Spencer. Hoo-yah. Hoo-yah. There we go. And Petty Officer Jeremiah Spencer. Ooh-ah. Not ooh-ah. It's who ya? Who ya? Say who? Who? Ya? Yeah. Who ya? Whoa. <laughs> Not who wa? It's who? Say who? Who? Ya? Yeah. Ya? Who ya? Who ya? There we go. And shipmate Alyssa Spencer. Who ya? Who ya? Very good. 
Secondly, now that we have our battle cry, now it's the theme song. The theme song for the Navy is the greatest theme song, and it goes like this. Anchors away, my friend. Anchors away. Now we must practice that at this time and be ready for battle. Petty uh, Officer Luke Spencer started off for us. Anchors away. My friend. Anchors away. Okay, good. Good, but not great. I noticed Petty Officer Jeremiah Spencer that you spoke it instead of sung it. Uh, we need a little bit more vibrato, a little higher, a little higher if we could. Petty Officer Luke Spencer, sound off. Anchors away. My friend. Anchors away. Okay, good. And the first and the end was good, but in the middle, the my friend, we have work to do. Too high, let's bring it down. You're up here, let's bring it to here. Anchors away, my friend. Anchors away. Okay, not bad, but sing the my friend. We're having trouble with the my friend. Anchors away, my friend. Anchors away. Petty Officer Luke Spencer. Anchors away, my friend. Anchors away. Very good. All right, I like that. Good theme song. Let's give them a hand for that. That was perfect. And lastly, we need to work, now that we have our battle cry and our theme song, we need to work on our salute. A salute is not like an army salute or a marine salute. A salute for the Navy. Sound off, Petty Officer Luke Spencer. Aye, aye, Captain. Petty Officer Jeremiah Spencer. Aye, aye, Captain. And shipmate Alyssa Spencer. Yes, sir, Daddy. Okay. Not bad. We will work on that. Before I came up here, I was handed a paper. And this paper, I've just been informed by the Pentagon. There's a special group that needs to be formed. Entitled Navy SEAL Team 1611. That's Navy SEAL Team 1611 for a covert operation. And honey, if you could go in my drawer in the desk back there <laughs> on the right-hand side and get the, the uh, you know, the, 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 it's in the right-hand drawer. I forgot it back there. Talk amongst yourselves for 30 seconds. <laughs> we'll take a brief intermission. This is important. This is so important that I forgot to bring it out. This is a covert operation. All right, here we go. This is a covert operation. Perfect. And uh, did you? Yes. All right, wonderful. Thank you. Nice sweatshirt. Oh, you brought me the wrong one. There should be two of them in there. Is there two in there? All right, I need the other one. Perfect. Once again, I have been informed by the Pentagon. We need to form a special SEAL team. And this is the United States SEAL Team 1611. This is a covert operation. Every Saturday, every Saturday, All right, I got it. All right. Wonderful, wonderful, perfect. Every Saturday at 10 a.m., you will report for duty. This is a covert operation. We will be performing direct raids into enemy territory. It's called Operation Soul saturation. If willing to accept this task, SEAL Team 1611 step forward to have makeup applied. Petty Officer Jeremiah Spencer step forward to have makeup applied. 
and Petty Officer Shipmate Alyssa Spencer stepped forward. Calling all shipmates of the Navy team. Be at church every Sunday school. Be at church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Be at soul winning. Invite visitors to church. I'm talking about Lisa Spencer, Josh Spencer, Luke Spencer, Jeremiah Spencer, Alyssa Spencer, Juanita Bador, Abby Black. Jason Carden, Velma Duell, Pat Ermai, Ken Phelan, Teresa Phelan, Mason Phelan, Courtney Hartzler, Stephanie Hartzler, Richie Harold, Jesse Harold, Wyatt Harold, Ava Harold, Ginger Meadows, John Miller, Katrina and Searsha Miller, Cheryl Miser, Randy Mullins, Carol Mullins, Ashley Pernstall, Evan Pernstall, Chad, Ethan and Michaela Shade, Sue Smith, Cody Walker, Kelsey Walker, Layson and Lucian Walker. Sharon Weaver, Diane Weinmiller, Howard Woodside, and Barb Woodside. Navy cadets, step forward. Dismissed. I just bought this too. Oh man, you see, you cannot get too crazy with these things. Praise the Lord. All right, exciting. We're going to go ahead and turn it over now to Brother Lee Slater and the United States Air Force. Air Force team, raise your hand. Just raise your hand up there. Good. And let me see your flags. Now remember, I issued you one flag. Keep your flags waving. It's okay. It's not a long uh, PT here. Um, I issued you but one flag. You have 60 days to guard that flag with your life. To keep that flag, you know where you should keep the flag? Probably with your Bible. If you kept your flag in your Bible close to you, you're going to remember, you can stop waving the flags. Now, now, uh, if you're on my team, I want to help you, okay? I want to help you with this. We're, first of all, we're going to, to unify, we have to have some commonality. And our, I don't, I'm not sure what happened with that Navy thing, the HUSA or HUA or whatever. I don't, I've never heard it before. I have no intentions of ever saying it. But listen, here is the, the Air Force made it very, very simple. And it's easy to align the Air Force motto with what we're going to do over the next 60 days. And that is this. It's two simple words. Now, where's my youngest? Who's the youngest person on my team here tonight? I don't have any cute daughter here to push around. Uh, uh, the youngest member of the team. Does anybody know? There is, is there somebody that would be under the age of 20? Okay, good, good. I don't want to call her. She's already red. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, here we go. It's two words. Aim high. So simply when I say Air Force for the next 25 minutes, every time I say Air Force, all you have to do is say aim high. Okay? Now, if you're not on the Air Force team and you don't want to participate, that's fine. But if you want to, that's okay too. But I'm looking for my team members to see if they get this concept because a lot of times people miss this. Okay, you ready? Air Force. Aim high. Good, good. Air Force. Aim high. Air Force. Aim high. Good, good. Now, 
Now, we're going to have a song, not that we're going to sing it all the time, but there'll be a special time when you'll sing this song. And this, sign, this song is simplistic, and it has everything to do with Jesus. And it's simply this, higher, 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 lift Jesus higher. So when I say Air Force, there's going to be a certain time when you're going to sing that. And that's what you should be thinking. If you're on the Air Force team or if you're not on the Air Force team, you should wake up tomorrow morning and think about that concept. How can I lift Christ higher? How is that possible? When I go to work, uh, when I interact with the people that are around me, understand that if you're born again, every person you come into contact or that contacts you is a divine point appointment from God himself. It has nothing to do with Satan. Satan's the, he, he's not working like that. Trust me. He has no interest. There's only one of him, and he has no time to connect your telephone with a telemarketer from India. Okay, he doesn't have that time. But God does. Okay, and he's got that power. So listen, so tomorrow morning when you wake up, this is what I want you to be singing in your mind all day long. Ready? You can sing it with me, okay? It's, it's not a hard song. Brother Joe, even you can sing it. I would suggest start out in the shower and work your way from there. <laughs> higher, 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 higher. Lift Jesus higher. And that's it. That's simple, simple stuff. Now, tonight, I just want to challenge you. I was going to challenge you with quite a few things, but God kind of impressed on my heart a couple of things, and that is this, the idea of iron sharpeneth iron. It's in the book of Proverbs, and it talks about the idea. That's That idea of iron sharpening iron It does, doesn't really make sense until you put the concept of a file to metal. And understand that the difference in the grains of those two metal is what sharpens that piece of steel. And that's what I want you to do, whether you're on the Army team, the Air Force team, Marines, it doesn't matter who, what team you're on, if you're part of this spring program, you need to be sharpening one another. And that means I don't care if the person that you're friends with or not friends with, encourage them to be at what they need to be. Now, here's my team, just so we're clear from the beginning, so that you know when you get a phone call from me, you'll know you're on my team. My lovely bride, uh, Lance and Skyler, of course, are in college, Nancy Belli, Kaylee Black, Kaylee Black and Shauna uh, Riddlebaugh, they are the powerhouse teen girls. They are the ones that's really going to do a lot of stuff here. Now, we've got uh, Karen Bird, Mary Cheney, Rhonda Duncan, Larry Hefner, uh, Zymini and Zyprincia, they're on here. Susie Hewitt and her mother, Mary uh, Pinyard. We've got Mary Ann Jennings and her uh, mother, Sherry Trent. We've got Carol McCabe, Tammy Miller which she already has her Air Force flag where she's at. Hopefully she's watching us tonight. And her lovely parents, uh, Jim and Jim Silverwood and Shirley Silverwood. Uh, we've got Julian and Alexis, and that's exciting. I'm excited to work alongside with Julian. Uh, and then we've got uh, Helen Potter. Uh, we've got Elena, Kiki, Wyatt, and Easton. Be in prayer for Wyatt. He's got a back issue tonight. And I told his sister how to fix it. It's very easy. If you have someone who's got a back issue, all you have to do is get as close as you can to them and you stomp as hard as you can on their left foot. Now, Brother Jim, they're going to forget about that back issue. That back issue will fleet them and they will probably run from you. Okay? And so and there's just certain tips there from the doctor. Okay. We have uh, Karen Schaefer. We've got Easton as well. Uh, we've got Marty Spring and uh, we've got Jeanette Stoltz. Barb Testament and her daughter, uh, Sherry. We've got Deb and her daughter, Amy. And we've got Noah Watkins. Noah's the guy, you're thinking of Noah, but it's not the man who built the ark. It's actually the man we pick up in Cyrus, and he's been coming here, and he's been having a great time. He, had a, he also had a back issue, but I wasn't able to stop on his foot today. And we've got the young couple from Cyrus, Nancy and Kemp Weeks. And I'm excited. I'm excited about what we're going to do. Now, here's the Bible verse I want to challenge you out of, okay? And uh, the pastor did a great job with this a couple Wednesdays ago. It says, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Now, you're asking yourself, the, the, the interesting thing, what I like about a good independent fundamental Baptist church, you never have to ask yourself, is there anything to do? Because there's always something to do. And over the next 60 days, there's eight 
different weeks to do something. Now, I get it. If you're not going to be here one week, no problem. But for, for Christ's sake alone, don't do things or miss things out of fear. Don't miss soul winning out of fear. Don't wish, miss a Wednesday night prayer meeting out of fear. Don't just dive in. The water's fine, and you'll enjoy it. And when 60 days has passed, you'll have formed a habit that's going to help you. I'm not saying it's going to be all peaches and cream because I'm not here to promote the Navy. It's going to be hard work. It's going to be hard, hard work being on the Air Force team. And there's going to be a lot of expectations. And so as I close this out, let's practice. Ready? Air Force? Okay. <laughs> I feel like it's the first day, the first hour of basic training. Pick them up, put them down, pick them up, put them down. We got it, though. They were suitcases. It wasn't hard. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> okay, now, uh, I'm going to clue you in what you're going to say. You're just going to say two words, aim high. You can even practice, sir. You won't need it unless you come on the winning team next year. Okay, are you ready? Air Force. Aim high. Okay, good. Now, let's try our song. Now, this time when I say Air Force, I'm going to say Air Force song. Okay, and Kiki's looking at me three words. Huh, never. Huh, mommy. Huh. No, it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's just going to be three words. Okay, ready? Air Force song. Higher, higher. Higher, 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 higher. Lift Jesus higher. Thank you. Hey, Amen. Wasn't that good? Hey, if you don't know that song, it is. it gets contagious, that song. I can hear Brother... Uh, Brother Lee singing in my sleep every night, higher, higher. And then he sings, higher, higher. And I wake up hearing that in my sleep just a little bit. Wasn't that wonderful? Hey, let's give the Air Force a big hand. Good, wonderful. That was wonderful. Praise the Lord. I love it. Amen. And let's cheer for each other. That's an important thing. And uh, we are... Uh, we're, we're, we're dividing to conquer, to conquer, and, uh, but we can still be good sports and, and, and really cheer on everybody, especially the Navy. Amen. All right. All right, at this time, it's time for the United States Army. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your willingness to be a part and present in our military briefing this evening. Next week, as we begin to embark upon this great campaign, that no one is expendable. Nobody. No one is expendable. That everyone is needed to be in their place for their team for the next eight weeks. We shall all Fight the good fight of faith as one unit under the high command of our Commander-in-Chief, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. However, it has come to my attention that about 75% of you may be somewhat discouraged or disappointed because you were not selected to be on the Army team. But let me assure you that the Army will succeed in this great endeavor. I have brought with me this, this evening some items that I would like to leave for my counterparts. Brother Lee Slater. Gotta have the idea. Yes, sir. Brother Chris Benson. Yeah. That way you can feel 
feel somewhat horrible. <laughs> growing up, growing up, I have enjoyed learning about the different branches of the military, the four main branches that are represented here this evening. I grew up learning about some of the great men, not just in the Army. Let's take the Air Force, for example. It used to be called the Army Air Corps. It came from the, the Army. The Army birthed the Air Force, if you please. It is the youngest of the main four, but it probably has roots of about 100 years. General Billy Mitchell is considered the father of the Air Force. He had advocated for a separate independent Air Force, which did become its own separate branch in 1947. Probably one of my favorite people back during that time that was with the Army Air Corps that really would be considered our today's Air Force was Lieutenant Colonel James Doodle, who during World War II led an air raid of 80 men, 16 B-25 bombers, against Tokyo, Japan on 18 April 1942 from the flight deck of the USS Hornet. All but one of the, B the, the B-25s were destroyed in crashes. Doolittle had believed that the loss of his aircraft would cause him to be court-martialed. Instead, he received the nation's high highest award, the Medal of Honor, and promoted up two ranks to Brigadier General. There was a movie made back in 1944. I was surprised it was made so close to the actual event of, uh, of the bombing of Japan. A movie called 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, made in 1944. Many have said who knew the actual story about the raid, said it is the most accurate portrayal of the Doolittle raid on Japan during that time. I've often thought about the Marine Corps. Lewis Burwell Puller, who is also known as Chest Chesty Puller. Puller was the most decorated Marine in American history. Every Marine is inspired by Chesty to do their very best. Chesty Puller had five, like I said, he was the most decorated Marine in history. He had five Navy crosses for heroism and gallantry. Some wanted for one of those Navy crosses to be upgraded to the Medal of Honor, which many thought that he had deserved. One of his greatest proponents for that was a man by the name of Pappy Boynton. Many of you may have heard of Pappy Boynton, squadron leader of the Baba Black Sheep. You know, my wife used to watch that program, not that because I think she liked Pappy Boynton, but it was Robert Conrad who played Pappy Boynton. Chessie became the symbolic spirit de corps of the Marine Corps. When he was with the 1st Division of the Marines, he earned his 3rd Navy Cross, the Bronze Star and Purple Heart at Guadalcanal during World War II. With tongue in cheek, I guess I would say that Chesty, yes, he was very successful. He was a man's man. But I believe that maybe his success was somewhat contributed because he had received some important military training at the Army Infantry School, Fort Benning, Georgia, Army Infantry School. And a lot of people don't know this. I didn't know it until I was doing my research on it. He was also second cousin to General George S. Patton, Army General. I would like to ask, Brother Bob, you are a Marine, is that right? Excuse me, you are a Marine, is that correct? Wasn't there a certain way that Marines would say good night? Do you know what I'm talking about? That's right. Good night, Chesty Puller, wherever you are. I had some heroes, some people I looked up to. In the Navy, you have Chester William Nimitz. He played a major role in naval history of World War II as commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, commanding air, land, and sea forces. You know, that kind of sounds kind of familiar. Air, land, and sea. We now have the Navy SEALs. That's what that actually stands for. During the World War II time, Nimitz was the leading U.S. Navy authority on submarines. Qualified in submarines during his early years and then later oversaw the conversion of submarines from gas to diesel. 
and then later was key in getting approval to build not only our nation's first nuclear sub, but the world's. Another Navy hero, which I have read several books about, was about a Navy SEAL named Richard Marcinko. Some say that he was the most decorated Navy SEAL during Vietnam. He led his men in SEAL Team 6 on an assault where they killed a large number of the Viet Cong and destroyed six of their combat boats. And it came to be called the most successful SEAL operation in the Mekong Delta. Here's a name I want you to remember, Calvin Graham. Does anyone recognize that name, Calvin Graham? If you get a chance, look him up. He is from Texas. In 1942, he had a pretty poor home life. His stepfather was pretty abusive, verbally and physically. And so he decided to leave. And he had a plan. He told his mother, Mom, I'm going to go visit some family members over somewhere here in the state, but I'm going to go visit some family members. At the age of 12 years old, he was able to finagle himself to be enlisted in the United States Navy. 12 years old. Now, I'm not going to tell you any more about it, but it's a very, very interesting story. So if you get a chance, look up that name, Google it, Galvin, Calvin Graham. Now, of course, we know there are Army heroes. Of course there are. Probably my favorite hero in World War I was Alvin York. World War I hero, earning the Medal of Honor, captured over 100 Germans. He loved his country. He loved his country's history, and he showed it by naming five of his ten children. Listen to what he named five of his ten children. Andrew Jackson York. Betsy Ross York. Windrow, Woodrow Wilson York. He's a Democrat. but Thomas Jefferson York. Samuel Houston York. When World War II came along, he went to re-enlist, but he was turned down due to his age. World War II, we have Audie Murphy, the most decorated. Puller was the most decorated Marine. Audie Murphy was the most decorated military soldier of all time. He was the most decorated American combat soldier of World War II. He earned the Medal of Honor. Listen to this. He earned the Medal of Honor at the age of 19. And then there is yours truly, General Douglas MacArthur. Widely known for primarily two different things. He was commander of the Allied Powers, and he accepted the unconditional surrender of Japan on the deck of a battleship, the USS Missouri. Three years before that, General MacArthur was in the Philippines. In February of 1942, just two and a half months into World War II, the Philippines were, they had gotten information that the Philippines were going to be overrun by the Japanese. And the president thought for sure that if the Philippines were run over, that he would lose his most valued general. So he ordered MacArthur out of the Philippines to go to Australia. And he made the statement in an interview just a couple days after he left the Philippines. And he said, I shall return. And that he did on October 20th, 1944. We too as Christians, matter of fact, being Christians, I just like to know from the other generals. You didn't have a Christian flag? Never mind. We too have our Lord's promise of his return. Now... Those of you that have been in the military, now, I wasn't in the military. Now, I was in Air Force ROTC in high school, got to do a little bit of marching. And one of the things that we enjoyed in the marching was the cadence that came along with it. And so I'm going to ask my Army comrades to go ahead and repeat this cadence with me. Look, you're not in the Marines. I don't want no mamby-pamby type repeating. You're not in the Navy, and you're not in the Air Force. All right? So, get ready. 
Here we go. Jesus said, I shall return. Jesus said, I shall return. And promise me you life that I will not burn. He has given a book to me. It's the powerful KJV. With that book and through His grace. We will someday win the race. Jesus said, I shall return. From His word, this we learn. In that sky he shall appear. In that sky he shall appear. We'll cause his saints to glory and cheer. <laughs> glory, glory, he's coming back. Glory, glory, he's coming back. This we know for a fact. This we know for a fact. Alright. I have another one coming up in just a moment. You may not like that one. Now. My program, now as the Army has prepared to engage in our campaign, it will become a seek and destroy mission. To seek lost souls with the intention of destroying the power of the devil within the lives through the blood and power of Christ. Therefore, may I introduce to you Operation Starfish. Operation Starfish stands for searching tenaciously at reaching fallen individuals seeking heaven. Operation Starfish again, searching tenaciously at reaching fallen individuals seeking heaven. We heard of the story of an older gentleman taking his stroll in the early morning along the beach. He strolled along the beach and he's walking around and the tide has taken out. And when the tide went out, it left hundreds and hundreds of starfish on the beach. And he would just meander his way through it, kicking the starfish out of the way, one way here, and one way over here. And he just, he just thought, boy, this is just something, this is unbelievable, all these starfish. And as he's walking and meandering through the starfish, he sees a little boy frantically grabbing a starfish and throwing it out into the ocean. Bending over again and throwing another one out in the ocean. Bending down again and taking another one and another one and throwing it out in the ocean. The older gentleman comes to the boy and says, Hey, son, what are you doing? I'm doing my best to save these starfish. Because if they don't get back in the water, they're going to die. He says, Son, you're wasting your time. Look at all those starfish that you missed. And so, look at all the starfish further down the beach. You will never get them all. That did not deter that young boy one bit at all. He said, son, you're not making a difference. You're not, you're not doing anything worthwhile. The boy didn't stop. Went down, picked up another starfish, threw it out in the ocean, said, made a difference for that one. Took another one, threw it out in the ocean, made a difference for that one. Listen, as we embark on this campaign, we may, we may not win the multitudes. We may not win the thousands. But let's just go out there and make the difference in the ones that we can. We can't save them all. We can't reach them all. But the ones that we can, the Lord expects us to. And one of these days, I can only imagine some man, some woman, some boy, some teenager, some girl, up in heaven saying, I'm sure glad Grace Baptist Church had that Amen. spring program yeah. 2024. Good. Every member of the Army who, re who goes soul winning, I have up here some awards. Everyone that with the Army that goes soul winning will receive a starfish, a golden, it's not real gold, so... A, a gold-colored starfish to wear on their lapel on their lapel when they come soul winning on Saturday morning. You come this Saturday morning, you will receive just the army. Only the army deserves the stars, you know what I'm saying? And you can wear, proudly wear that starfish 
to show your desire to make a difference in someone's life for the cause of Christ. I will also be looking for some special operators. Special forces, if you please. The highest top five point achievers by Wednesday, April 24th, will receive the Armor of God medal, which is this right here. And it has a Roman centurion all clad in body armor. And it says, put on the whole armor of God. And then it says at the bottom, pray always. Amen. Along with that, if you are one of the five top achievers by Wednesday the 24th, you will also receive combat bayonet. Well, why isn't it a sword? Because if we're soul winners, we're not using the whole sword. We're just using the New Testament. You should strive to attend all church services and soul winning on Saturday. The more you attend, the more points you can acquire. I do have one qualifier. In other words, if you get the most points but you don't have this qualifier, you don't make it in the special ops. The qualifier is that you pass out within that, within that three and a half week time period 30 tracks of my choosing. And not to be done during Saturday morning soul winning. Each week, at least two of the tracks must be given to an actual individual. The rest you can leave at different places such as gas station, work, porta johns, public restrooms, wherever where you think people will pick that up. Again, this is not to be done on Saturday morning soul winning. The goal is that it becomes a part of your everyday life. You know what? Special ops, they're constantly training every day of the week. They spend millions and millions of dollars a year just in ammunition. Just for, whether it be the SEAL teams, whether it be Marine Recon, whether it be uh, the Rangers, or the Green Berets. Now, we have all desired to someday hear the Lord say to us, what are the two words? Well done. The top two point achievers in the Army's team will receive the Armor of God, the Armor of God medal and a Bravo Zulu award medal. It's a lapel pin. The Bravo Zulu or the BZ award is an international naval signal, which means, actually means, well done, in which is recognized by all the military branches. The top seven church service attenders at the end of the program will receive the MAC, M-A-C, like MacArthur or McDonald's. The MAC award, and that M-A-C stands for Mighty Against Conflict. And that will be an award that, if any of you are familiar with some of the, uh, now these for the most part are hat pins, but you, you, you've seen someone in the Army who's been in actual combat. They have that blue rifle with the reef around it. Well, that's what that is. It is what I am calling the Mighty Against Conflict Award. Because you know what? You strive to go to church. Guess what? You're going to get some conflict. Now, that is everything that I have at this point. However, I have one last cadence that I would like to share with everyone here. Oh, I almost forgot. You know, I told you about the, the heroes that I really admired growing up as a kid. But when I was just a little, little boy, Lucian, how old are you? Six. When I was about his age, I had a favorite military hero. 
And he was in the army, not the army, but he was in the Navy. And so he was my favorite military hero when I was six years old. And so I brought this for preachers. I'm surprised that he did not wear the same exact uniform that is found on the front of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> now, Army, here's this last cadence. I need you, I, I need you with me. Don't, don't let me up here by myself. Here we go. Marine Corps, Marine Corps, get out of our way. Army going to come and ruin your day. Air Force, Air Force, try to fly. Army's going to come and make you cry. Navy, Navy, hide in your boat. The Army is here and we're the GOAT. Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps II. Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps II. Army strength will make you blue. Army strength will make you blue. Army, Army, you're mighty fine. Army, Army, you're mighty fine. You're the only one that's gone to shine. Oh, I got one more thing. Preacher want me? All right. Sound off, I read your name. No, I'm with you. Lee Comstock, Teresa Comstock, these are the people on, uh, on the Army. Uh, Bob Baker, Jen Baker, Lois Biddle, Jody Christian. Is Jody Christian here? Okay, because be I've been trying to find out who some of these people are. Uh, Chantel Crawford, Hayden Crawford, Evan Crawford, the Crawfords, Vince Dean, Lori Dean, Jordan Dean, Bill Emswild, Joe Fikes, Joe Henry. Happy birthday, Brother Joe Henry. Ogla Henry, Joseph Henry, Isabel Henry. Matter of fact, I want to thank these three here. I mean, it's, it's tough standing there. I, I appreciate their help. Christina Jones, Kayla Kendall, Elizabeth Keller, Emily Keller, Pat Leung, Tiffany Luciano, Michael Luciano, Caitlin Luciano, Emily Luciano. If I'm butchering your name, I'm sorry. Jeremy Moore, Sarah Moore, Ralph Snyder, Sandy Steger. Doug Stone, Sheila Stone, Scott Vian, Nadine Vian, uh, Micah Vian, Savannah Vian, Malachi Vian, Isaiah Vian, and Heavenly Vian. So that is it for the Army. singing that. Oh, wasn't that good? Praise the Lord. I, I, I gave Brother Lee 10 minutes and uh, 30 minutes later. Uh, wasn't that good though? Praise the Lord. Thank you, captains. Boy, you can tell they're getting you charged up. Now, I'm not going to preach a message, but I do want you to grab your Bibles and turn to Jude. And let me read two verses to you and we'll be done. Tonight, you've heard, you've been challenged already from the Word of God, from the captain's of the teams, and hopefully by the Holy Spirit of God has challenged you. Jude, verse number 22, the Bible says this, Of some, of some, and, and I want you to include in this verse, I want you maybe in the margin to put by there a Christian. A Christian. For this spring program, I want you, of some, have compassion making a difference. I want you to include by verse number 22 over the next eight weeks, I am going to make a difference in somebody's life. I am going to have compassion. Having compassion on someone else includes getting your eyes off of yourself and looking out to another Christian, a child of God, and saying, I'm going to make a difference in their life. Everything that you can do to get them into church. It's a hard thing to get people to church today, but you 
can make a difference. I want you to include verse number 22 and put a Christian beside that. And then over the next eight weeks, verse number 23, others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. I want you to include beside that the lost. Over the next eight weeks, every person in here tonight should say, Pastor, I want to make a difference in a Christian's life, and I want to win a soul to the Lord. Make a difference in a Christian, and I want to see somebody pulled out of the fire. Every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. I want you to think in your mind right now, Lord, who can I make a difference to? There's someone out there. Lord, I know they're saved. They're a child of God, but they're on the wrong path. Maybe they're not in church anymore. Maybe they're out there and the devil has had his way with them. But Lord willing, over the next eight weeks, Lord, I know you're putting that person on my heart. Lord, I will make a difference in their life. And then I want you to think of that person that you know that's lost. It's a family member. It's a co-worker. It's a neighbor, somebody that you know, maybe a good friend, but they're lost. They're counting on you to pull them out of the fire. I wonder, Lord, place someone on your heart to encourage a Christian and to see a lost person saved. Here's the challenge tonight. Let's come to an old-fashioned altar. Lord, I know you who you put on my heart. Lord, I'm going to ask you, help me to make a difference in their life. Let's stand together and use this altar as the Lord's placed them on your heart. Praise the Lord. The Lord's put somebody on my heart, several people on my heart. The only way that we're going to make a difference is to show compassion. That's the only way. Sometimes people don't need the preaching in their face as much as they need compassion. And that's what they need. And that's when it's important that we are filled with the Spirit of God. Lord, use me. Help me to be exactly what they need at that very point. Of some, have compassion, making a difference. Others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. That's what we're doing. Every Saturday, I encourage you, let's go pull somebody out of the fire. 
Thank you so much for being here. And God bless you. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed. Make sure you're back Wednesday night in the Lord's house. And, of course, be involved. Get ready. 60 for 60 this Saturday. Be here 10 o'clock. And we know the Lord will bless. Brother Jared, if you will, dismiss us in prayer.